preach about. So uh, we're going to be, it says psalm in your, uh, in your bulletin. Tina corrected me on it earlier this week. I said, be preaching from Psalm 31. She said, you mean Proverbs? I said, yep, I mean Proverbs. And then I sent it to Brother James uh, saying psalms. So uh, is this not picking me up well? Oh, there we go. Whoa. All right. Thank you, brother. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for our parents, and we thank you for our mothers who love us, and uh, that love is a reflection of your love. And as we celebrate them today, Lord, we pray that uh, we celebrate you first and foremost in every day of our life. And uh, we'll be careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory for it's in your name we ask. Amen. All right, so Proverbs 31, we're going to break this into two different sections. And uh, on the back of your prayer sheet is uh, an outline, and I, I'll be going through that and revealing that. So if you'd like to uh, jot down some notes to use at a later date, or <clears throat> I don't know about you, but when I write something down, I just remember it. You, you can ask Katie. i got notebooks all over the house with stuff written in it that I'm never going to look at again. So after my funeral, Danny's going to have a field day going through all the notebooks. But it'll make no sense to anybody but me. So the first section is moms give great advice. And uh, I know I'm thankful. My mom's here today. I wish I would have listened to her a lot more. Uh, I'll be honest that there was a time in my life when I thought my mom was not the smartest person in the world and I think we all felt that about our parents sooner or later but the older I get the more I realize how smart my mom is and uh, I wish I would have uh, ta taken her advice so starts off verse 1 the words of King Lemuel an oracle that his mother taught him so he breaks out and he says, this is something that my mom taught me that I always remember. And it goes in uh, verse 2. What should I say, my son? What son of my womb? What son of my vows? And then we hear, go to verse 3a. And this is some advice that a lot of mothers give their sons. And it, it could correlate and go vice versa to young ladies. And it says, don't spend your energy on women or your efforts on those who destroy the king. So A under section one is don't waste your time on people that accept the one. We ought to be looking for the one throughout our life. We don't need to waste our time on uh, dating people that uh, have we have no future with them, that it's, it's just kind of uh, biding our time. We want to make sure that we spend our energy on that one woman or that one man that God created us for. Now, I'm not going to stand up in here and say it's for every single person to get married because we know lots of people have uh, exceptional lives and, and it, it's almost a gift to not have to get married, to be able to live, live your life um, in celibacy. But for the majority of us, um, we want to live a life with someone else. And uh, it's important. And that's good advice from, from a mother. Wait for the one. Don't waste your time running around, chasing off all of these people. When you know it's right, you know it's right. Uh, Katie and I were engaged within the first year we started dating. I knew it was right. And I wasted a lot of my time on women who weren't right for me. I wanted them to be right. Um, I prayed that they were right, but they weren't right. And, uh, and so that's good advice from a mother. In part B, it says, or efforts on those who destroy kings. Be careful about the company that you keep. The people that you're around say more about you than you say about yourself. We ought to be spending our time with people who want to lift up the name of the Lord, with people who want to lift us up and encourage us to do better with our life. Encourage us to be better people. Encourage us to be nicer, more loving people. That's who we should spend our time with. Amen. As a child, I would, you know, I'd be like, Mom, my, my buddy's coming over. You know, you're going to meet this guy and whatever, have dinner or for whatever reason. You know, when I was a kid, I, I couldn't have a family function without having a friend with me. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, my mom would say, I don't know about that guy. 
Just a weird feeling I got. Oh, mom, you're crazy. And we'll be careful. You know, he might get you in trouble. Guess what? They got me into trouble. So don't spend your time on those who destroy kings. Verses 4 through 7. It is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire beer. Otherwise, they will drink, forget what is decreed, and pervert justice for all the oppressed. You know, uh, we, are, we have a kingship inside of us, those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ. So anything that's not for a king isn't for us. We shouldn't be pursuing after alcohol. We shouldn't be pursuing after drink. Uh, it, it's not for a Christian. And why? Look at verse 6. Give beer to the one who is dying and wine to one whose life is bitter. Let him drink so that he can forget his poverty and remember his trouble no more. You know, Katie and I were kind of sulking in our own pity for a, a couple seconds. And uh, we're talking about, yeah, we, uh, we got it hard. We got this, that, and the other to do. And we're worrying. And then I said to her, we have a 50-pound bag of rice that I bought at Gordon's that's underneath the, the shelves. And I said, you know, there are people in this world and places in this world, they'd slit our throat for that bag of rice. They wouldn't even think anything of it. Boy, am I blessed. I don't need to, to try to forget my life. I don't need to get to a place where I don't know where I am, where I'm going, how, you know, I, I stumble when I walk. It's not for those that have joy in their heart. And so if we're turning to that, we're turning away from the joy in our heart. The Bible tells us to be drunk on the Spirit. Amen. We should be like drunk people, but we should be drunk in the Spirit of God. And He's the one that should give us joy and make us happy. He's the one that should provide truth to come from our lips. You know, they call alcohol the truth serum. Because uh, you just say whatever. <laughs> it gets that filter from your brain to your mouth. And God should be the one that provides truth through us. The Holy Spirit living inside of us. So, are we one who is dying? Well, yeah, we, we start dying as soon as we're born. But we're not on our deathbed. And as long as we're on our deathbed, we don't need to necessarily numb ourselves to the world. We should go ahead and be in the world. Not of the world, but in the world. And not to to uh, make ourselves immune from what's going on around us. Verse 7, uh, it says, Let him drink so that he can forget his poverty and remember his trouble no more. We have trouble, but we don't have trouble. I went and visited uh, Tina and Phil's friend Bobby, who uh, doesn't have a leg anymore. And they want to go up further, and he said, That's it. I'm done with surgery. He's got an infection in his bones. I'm, I'm thankful that I can still walk around. There might come a day that I can't, but I'm thankful today. My, my mother-in-law is sitting in a hospital bed. I'm thankful that I'm not sitting in a hospital bed today. You know what? I could be sitting in a hospital bed tomorrow. It happens that fast. But I'm thankful for today. And so I don't need to turn to that. And you know, my mom used to tell me that. My, my father was an alcoholic, and when I was a child, she'd say, don't ever start drinking, because then you never have to stop. <laughs> and no matter what, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to stop. All of these things that we do to get through the day are making our days less. And so sooner or later, the vices that we have in our life, we're going to have to stop them or they're gonna kill us. That's a choice. And so we might as well just stop them now. And finally, mothers tell us to uh, walk with integrity, to be a people of integrity. Verse eight, it says, speak up for those who have no voice, for the justice of all who are dis, uh, dispossessed, speak up, judge righteously, and defend the cause of the oppressed and needy. You know, I wasn't always a nice person. Some of you might think I'm not a nice person now, I don't know. But I was a worse person at one point in my life. 
And I know that good advice from my mother was to be nice to those. Be nice to people who are different than you. Don't be oppressive. Judge righteously. Defend the cause of the oppressed and the needy. And that's a good lesson that we learn from our mothers. Now, just because you're a mother doesn't mean that you, fuf you fulfill all 20-something of these little points. And that doesn't mean that you're a horrible mother. But we draw out of these things, qualities that make up good moms. Things that they give us that help us to make it through our life. And that's a blessing. Mothers are truly a blessing from God. And, uh, and I'm thankful for all the mothers in my life. Now we go on to, to a praise part. Moms are the, are the heart of a household. Moms fulfill a role. Now, we're living in a time where everybody wants to tell us, you know, men and women are the same. You know, any, anything that women can do, men can do. Anything that a man can do, a woman can do. Well, I disagree. Men and women are different. There are some overlaps. But men and women were created for a certain purpose in life, to fulfill a role. And there are things that Katie does that I cannot do. <laughs> she had, when it comes to Danny, she has the patience of a saint. <laughs> I could not do it alone. She stayed the night at the hospital the other day. Uh, Danny went to school with dirty underwear. Don't tell him I told you. <laughs> I just don't think about that stuff. You know, for dinner, he had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I just want to throw something quick together. I just want it done, get it in, be done. But I've seen nothing in the refrigerator and Katie make a meal that just was unbelievable. I can't do that. There, I'm sure there are men who can do that, but this ain't one of them. And I thank God that he gave me a wife that, that can provide for our family in that way. So it's uh, verse 10 and 11, 10 through 12. <clears throat> Who can find a capable wife? She is more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will not lack anything good. She rewards him with good, not evil, all the days of her life. So part A, or uh, letter A under big section two is, one of the things that are a blessings for moms is her husband values and trusts her. You know, it made me think, it seems that most presidents are more willing to listen to their, their wives, the first lady, than they are to listen to their number one advisors. I know I could not be a pastor without the advice of Katie. Uh, we, we get in bed at the end of a long day and I go to my wife for advice. A lot of the decisions that you think that I made were really made by Katie. She truly is the heartbeat of our family. And I thank God for that. I thank God that uh, my mother encourages me to do whatever I want to do. I came to her one day and said, Mom, I want to be a trombone player. She said, go be a trombone player. I'm going to support that. Sometimes I wish you would have said, you're crazy, go do something else. But, but here we are. So, uh, in part B, we find in verses 13 through 15, she selects wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her husband and portions for her female servant. So letter B, I labeled as she thinks about the essentials of life. She thinks about the things that a family needs, clothing, food. Uh, how many men, don't be shy, raise your hand when your wife's out of town, you don't eat very well. I know I don't. You know, I, just, I, I just as soon open up a, a can of ravioli. <laughs> the only thing that I, the only reason I start cooking uh, I mean, I can cook pretty good. I'm a pretty good cook, uh, I think. But I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't want to take the time to, to do all the stuff. And the same thing with clothes. And, and so I thank God that we have moms around that think about those essentials of life. Verses 16 through 19. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. 
She draws on her strengths and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees that her profits are good and her lamp never goes out at night. She extends her hands to the spinning staff and her hands hold a spindle. What are these things? Let her see as moms are great project managers. Moms do a great job of organizing all different kinds of things around the house. If I got something that, I, that needs to be done around the house, I ask Katie to help me organize it. I can't even get my, my mind wrapped around it. We praise the Lord for um, women who can organize, who can multitask. Women are great multitaskers. I got a one-track mind. <laughs> I think about what I'm doing, that's it. If, if I need to move on to something else, I need to stop that and move on to the next thing. Katie can have 50 different pots going on. I used to watch my mom with things boiling all over the place and getting food ready. I mean, it just crazy. It, it makes me feel crazy. I can't. I can only do one thing at a time. But I thank God that moms can do more than one thing at a time. Letter D, verse 20. Her hand reaches out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy. Moms are compassionate. Moms are are just people who minister to, they, they, they just have this way. You just know when somebody's a mom. Sometimes when I'm hurting, I just wanna look around. Are you a mom? <laughs> Remember when Danny was a, a little boy and we said, well, what happens if you get lost? What should you do? And he said, I should look for a mom. <laughs> and that's so true. I remember when I was a kid, I used to like to hang out with the older ladies because I just like being around a lot of moms. And they didn't even have to do anything for me. It's just nice to be around a loving mother. And it's a reflection of the love that God has for us. And thank goodness moms are compassionate. You know, I've, I've seen many times my mother go without for a near random stranger because she just wanted to help somebody. She, there was a burden on her heart. And I can honestly say in our family, uh, the driving of our giving and what we give of ourselves and what we give financially comes from the heart of my wife. It, it's just different. And uh, I think anybody who denies that are kind of loco. <laughs> so it's not to see and, and, and we look at moms and dads in there and they have different value that they bring to a, a child's life moms are compassionate verse 21 and 22 she is not afraid for her household when it snows for all in her household are doubly clothed she makes her own bed coverings her clothing is fine linen and purple you know one of the the biggest changes in my life that I can describe since I've been married and, and living with a mother, <laughs> you know, co-leading co our household together, is that in our closet, we have a giant tub of hats and gloves and boots and just random winter gear. You know what I used to wear when, during winter time before I got married? whatever <laughs> I just walked out and dealt with it and now I'm kind of because Katie always keeps me nice and, and warm you know she makes you bundle up and I go out to shovel the drive and she makes sure my scarf's wrapped around so I don't get any frostbite moms think ahead dads well at least this dad I don't think ahead very well sometimes I just jump into projects and different things and then I realize I should have thought about this a little bit Plumbing is like that, right, man? A lot of times you get into a plumbing project. I can do, I can do this, and then you find you got to do, uh, you know, got to dig up the floor. <laughs> so, thank goodness, or thank God that we have mothers who can plan ahead. Verse twenty-three: Her husband is known at the city gates, where he sits among the elders of the land. Now, what does this mean? Well, to me. It's uh, moms lift up their families. Moms lift up their families. The members of the family, they lift them up. They encourage them. They, want, they make them want to do better. I know uh, I, I talked earlier about how my mom, just whatever I wanted to do, she encouraged me. 
You know, I wanted to ride a bike. Okay, well, let's get you a bike. I want to play trombone. Well, let's find a way to get you a trombone you can play. And, and she just encouraged me, whatever I chose to do, she, she encouraged me to be the best at whatever, whatever I was. And thank God for moms that lift up their family members and help them to, to be the leaders in their community and to inspire them to get out and make a difference in the world. Letter G in verse 24, we see she makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants. Well, moms always find a way. You know, my, um, you know this about me. My, my father left when I was younger. Uh, I think I was probably six when mom and dad got a divorce. And my mom had to go out and get a job. And she made about minimum wage. And, uh, you know, I think she worked like six days a week sometimes when inventory was on Saturday. And uh, we, we didn't have a lot of money, but we always had food and we were always taken care of. And, and I can say this, she probably should have looking back, but we never got food stamps. We never went on welfare. She was, she was a proud woman and she worked her rear end off to make sure that we had what we needed. And I don't know how she did it, because uh, I've been in situations where I made a lot more than my mom ever made. And uh, it always seems like money always runs out, no matter how much money you have. And, but she found a way to provide for us. There was always a way. And she found a way to celebrate with us, too. You know, we used to count the change out of the couch so we could go and get a couple burgers or a pizza to celebrate. And uh, God bless mothers especially mothers in this day and age, that just find a way to provide for their children and their family. God bless them. Verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at the time to come. Moms keep it together. <laughs> Moms can really keep a situation together. I feel like I've been gifted to uh, be in a situation and, and, you know, keep it together and then I fall apart. And I guess that's kind of a, a womanly characteristic because women can keep it together through whatever situation, financial, a death in the family, a sickness. When push comes to shove, they're there and they're keeping it together for you. Now, what happens behind closed doors when they go and fall apart and they're not really keeping it together? They're just showing you. But moms always are there to keep the family together. And you notice in a family, when the mother is gone, when the matriarch of that family is gone, the family changes. Amen. The family starts to go apart and go their separate ways. And there's not as many family dinners. And... Um, arguments come up within the family. Moms keep a family together. Thank you, Lord, for the example that mothers give us. Letter I, 26 and 27. She opens her mouth with wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of the household and is never idle. Moms guide the family by example and good advice. You know, the number one indicator of a child's success is the level of education of the parents, more specifically, the level of education of the mother. And I thank God for mothers like my sister Daniela, who gave up everything, walked away from a life to go and finish schooling and follow a dream to, to be a nurse, which is culminating with her pinning ceremony next Saturday. And what an amazing thing. And even more importantly than what that says about Daniela and what that says about the integrity of our family is the message it sends to her daughter. To go ahead and be who you want to be. To go ahead and even though it looks tough, to, to get through it and make it. Don't give up on life. Persevere. Now, your children might not follow exactly in your footsteps when you do all of these things, but it's going to send a message to them. I watched my mom struggle to reach her dreams and, so, and to support our family in a better, more meaningful way. 
Praise moms for giving us good examples. Praise the Lord for putting mothers or a, a mother figure in all of our lives that could guide us and strengthen us in a lot of these ways. Amen. I thank God for, for this. Letter J, 28 through 29. Her, son rise, her sons rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women are capable, but you surpass them all. Now, I, I, we joke about this and a lot of times when we're in the kitchen and Katie's like, taste this, what I've made, and I taste it and I go, mm. I'll say to her, many women are capable, but you surpass them all. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend say, say, using that vernacular with your wife. We might want to use a, a more, uh, you know, but I mean, there is something to be said about that. Have you ever just looked at your wife, guys, and said, baby, out of all the women in the world, thank God I got you. You know, there are lots of women out there that I could have ended up with, but you take the cake. You're the perfect person for me. And I thank God for that. Now we're going to skip verse 30 real quick. We'll come back to it. And let's go to verse 31. Now there's a, there's a lot of discussion right now. And, and I watch the news and, and I think to myself, like, it doesn't make any sense to me. But I guess, I guess this is a problem. And if we go to the Bible, we have an answer for it. It says, give her the reward of her labor and let her works be praise her at the city gates. Women who do whatever job deserve fair compensation for what they do. Equal pay for equal work. Women and mothers, are just as, their time is just as valuable as any man. They, they have their own struggles that, you know, it's not like every person comes from a, a Donna Reed family and, you know, the mom just works to, to look for something to do and she sells her little uh, Afghans at the crochet club or whatever. You know, women and, and nowadays, and, and we see back then, in some families, the woman has to work and has to bring in money. And if they're doing work that a man is doing or anybody else is doing, they deserve the equal compensation for that. Amen. God tells us that, that we are to, to give mothers the reward of, of her labor, of their labor. Now, finally, here's verse 30. Now, and I don't say this, I think every woman in here is a beautiful woman. I really do. But one thing we can be sure of is that, is that we, as a society, give women their value by how pretty they are, by how curvy they are, or how nowadays it seems like uncurvy, when you, <laughs> what, what we hold up. But, um, but the Bible tells us that charm is deceptive. You know, there was a, a lot of women, I thought that they were the woman that I wanted to be around until I got to know them a little bit. And they weren't as charming as they looked. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. And, and I say this, uh, I'm signing my own uh, death warrant here, but uh, I'm getting uglier and uglier. <laughs> the older I get, the, you know, my, my body's starting to, I know I'm, I, I haven't broke 40 yet. But, but I can see that train of coming, you know. <laughs> I, I coached my son's uh, Little League game for two hours, and I sat down for about a half an hour. When I stood up, I had some plantar fasciitis. I was walking around like this. You know, beauty is fleeting, and our bodies are failing. And, and you know, we can dance around at all, all that we want, but there's always somebody younger, always somebody more attractive that you know the next generation is is always ready to take our spot so charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting but a woman who fears the lord will be praised the most important thing that you can do as a mother that you can do as a father is live a life that lifts up the name of the lord jesus christ Amen. You can give your child the best billionaire life. They could be the, 
the best lawyer in the state. They can go and run for Senate. They can even be president of the United States. But if you don't teach them a fear of the Lord, you have taught them nothing. Amen. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Why? Because the fear of the Lord leads to repentance. And repentance leads to salvation. And salvation is the most important decision. It's the most important thing that any of us can deal with in our whole life. Amen. Because anything else is only about this short, finite life that we live. Our wealth will end the day that we die. Our looks will end the day that we die. Whatever degree that we have is null and void the day that we die. Our house goes into uh, the legal system the day that we die. But the day that we die, our salvation is realized Amen. or not Amen. realized. Amen. It's the most important choice that you can have. And it's the most important thing that you can instill in your children. Amen. My mother didn't make all the right decisions and she'll be the first one to tell you that but she instilled in me a fear of God I rejected it for many years of my life but I know wholeheartedly that God used my mother to plant a seed in my heart because she taught me God's statute she taught me to have a fear and a love for the Lord and that's the most important gift that she gave me and even though I broke her heart many times, and she would beg me, Steve, just come back to God, please. He loves you. And I broke her heart. That seed that she planted took root. And, and what is the message that we tell our children? It's the gospel. And the gospel is as simple as this. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for everyone's life a way that we should live our life. But we choose to sin. And sin leads to brokenness. We are all broken people. And at the core of our brokenness is because of sin. Amen. We're thinking about parents today. And I'm going to be a little firm with parents. And I can be that firm because I am one. But we mess our kids up. For all the good things that we do, there's... For every 100 good things we do, there's at least one bad thing that we do. And that messes our kids up. Our sin leads to our children's brokenness. Amen. And then our children grow up to be broken people who continue to sin, who continue to be more and more broken. But there's hope. There's repentance. Where we can turn from our own way. We can turn from the path of walking to our own drummer and start marching to the music of the Lord. And when we turn, which is called repentance, that means we accept the gospel. Amen. And the gospel is the good news, is the literal translation. And the good news is that although that we are broken and we've transgressed an almighty, powerful, and righteous God, that we can be brought back into him through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you made that decision in your life yet today? You may not have tomorrow. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. So if you're wrestling with your own salvation, working it out, trying to um, fight and wrestle against the Lord, even though he's calling you, you give in today. We're going to have a time of invitation. Where Brother James will come up and lead you in a song. And if you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can make that public and do that today by just stepping in the aisle and walking down. I'll pray with you and we can get you started to turn and be back on the right path. Amen. And that's the path that leads to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What are we singing today? Brother? Page 